Sometimes you change your mind. So today, we talk about what options you have with a tubal ligation or a vasectomy. I'm Dr. Mark Amos, and this is Taco About Fertility Tuesday. So you're done having your kids and you want a permanent form of protection. There are a couple forms out there. You can have your tubes tied. They can be blocked with clips. There's even an old procedure called a sure where they put coils into your uterus, into the fallopian tubes, or you can get him to get a vasectomy. And usually this is helpful because you don't have to worry about protection. But sometimes you change your mind. Sometimes you want to have another child. Sometimes you get a new relationship and you want to have a child with this person. And so today we're going to talk about what are the options available to you if you've had your tubes blocked or if you had a vasectomy. So we're going to start with tubal blockage, which some people call tying their tubes. And many women undergo this procedure. It's a very good form of contraception. The downside is it is not always reversible. And so what we're going to talk about is what are your options, such as reversing a tube and when those options are available, and what factors should help you decide which options to pick. Essentially, there are two options. The first option is to undergo a tubal reversal. That is where they take the tubes and they reattach them so you can get pregnant naturally. The second option is to proceed with in vitro fertilization, where we don't need the tubes and we can bypass the tubes, so therefore you don't have to undergo a procedure to fix the tubal ligation, and you also get to keep your form of contraception. Now, tubal ligations can be done laparoscopically, they can be done abdominally during a C-section, they can even be done hysteroscopically through the uterus. Well, the same thing when you go to treat a tubal ligation and you're trying to do a tubal reversal, it can also be done laparoscopically or through a mini lap. Now, a mini lap is a tiny incision, kind of like a mini C-section scar, where they can go in there and through a microscope, fix the tubes. Now, one of the difficult things about tubal reversals is that many doctors don't do them anymore. When I first started, I did several, and now I do very few. And so I actually don't offer to do them anymore because I don't think it's fair to my patients since I don't do enough of them. So I recommend my patients to go elsewhere. On the same token, I think there are many other doctors who don't do many of these. And hopefully, just like me, they don't try to do them if they don't do enough of them. So let's talk about the pros of a tubal reversal. One of the best things about a tubal reversal is, is that it's free to try to have a kid. You can try as many times as you want. It doesn't cost anything. Whereas with IVF, every time you try IVF, you have to spend money. So in one situation, you don't have high success each time. You have your natural pregnancy rate, but you only have to pay once to get it fixed. With IVF, you have to pay multiple times. The downside of a tubal ligation is that it may not work, which then you're going to have to do IVF costing you more. The second thing is, is that you're going to have to have a form of contraception. So if it works and you don't want another pregnancy, are you going to undergo a tubal ligation again? The third issue is that after a tubal reversal, the risk of ectopic is higher. Matter of fact, you have an ectopic risk of about 3 to 8%, whereas naturally you only have an ectopic risk well below 1. IVF also has an ectopic risk, but that is usually 1% at the most. From the physician standpoint, the thing I look at when I'm trying to recommend whether someone should undergo a tubal reversal is I look at multiple factors, such as what type of tubal ligation did they have in the past? What will be the length of the tube left over? Did they remove the ends of the tube? 
What's the age of the patient? How many kids does the patient want? So to start the process, one of the first things we do is we look at the surgical report. And what we're looking for is what type of procedure was done. So for example, if they cut the fimbriae off, which are the ends of the tube, there is really no way to reverse it. There is a controversial procedure where they do create fimbriae, but they don't work as well and the ectopic rate goes up. So I do not recommend having that procedure. And again, very few people do it, but I understand there are religious situations where you need to do that. And obviously that would be warranted. But for most people, if the fallopian tube was actually cut off and sent to pathology, there really is no way to reverse it and IVF would be your only option. Now, there are other types of procedures. One's called a Pomeroy. The other one's called a Parkland procedure, where a small segment of the tube is either cl- clamped by, with um, suture or cut out and then tied. And in those procedures, as long as there are four centimeters of fallopian tube left between the segment from the uterus and the segment on the fimbriae, it can be re most. That's a technical word for meaning bringing them together. Now, what they do is they cut off the old edges of the tube where the sutures were. And then what they do is then they put the tubes together and sew them together. Then at the end of the procedure, they push dye through to make sure the tubes are open. Now, if you had a sure device place where they placed coils into the fallopian tubes, this is usually not reversible because it caused scarring in the tubes. And so usually IVF is going to be your only option. The same thing if they took too much tube when they did the procedure or if they burnt the end of the tubes, the function of the tubes, which is the ability to pick up the egg, will not be able to be done or there will not be enough tube left and you will not be able to undergo the reversal. Now, age is an important part because if you're younger, then having a reversal has a very good chance of working. But let's say you're 41 and you undergo a reversal. Well, we already know the fertility rate is low at 41. So now you're undergoing a procedure and you have a low chance of getting pregnant. And so if it doesn't work and you waste a year trying that and you don't get pregnant, now you're trying IVF 42 and your chances have dropped tremendously. So I think age plays a part in this. And we're going to talk about this in a second. The last thing I always talk about is how many kids do you want? If you know you want a lot of kids, let's say you want three, four kids, then it would be crazy to do IVF. You should do a tubal reversal because it's not worth the cost of doing IVF multiple times to get that full family. IVF is considered what you do to get one child, not to get three to four kids. And so a tubal reversal would make more sense in that situation. Now, one of the most important things before you do a tubal reversal, regardless of any of these factors, is always test a few things before doing it. For example, test your ovarian reserve. Even if you're young, what if you have poor egg quality? And what if, even if you undergo this reversal, you're going to still have problems? The next thing to look at is, what is the sperm like? If he has no sperm, or very severe sperm, you're still going to need to do IVF. So you want to make sure you check that with your partner before you undergo a reversal, because if you undergo the reversal and then find out he has severe sperm, now you just underwent a procedure with no benefit. I actually did have a case where a patient came to me and had a reversal by another doctor and then found out her partner had severe sperm issues and then was coming to see me for IVF. And I was blown away that no one would test his sperm before putting her through a procedure. So for yourself, do yourself a favor. If you're thinking about undergoing a tubal reversal, please make sure there is good sperm. I don't even care if he's had kids before. That's the excuse I always hear is, oh, well, he has kids. That just means he has sperm at that time. It doesn't mean things can't change. So make sure you get him tested before you undergo a procedure. Another important point is to make sure you have a good surgeon. I mentioned earlier that I have not done many of these procedures over the last few years, and for that reason, I have stopped doing them because I feel like I could not do patients a service by doing them since I no longer feel my skills are as strong as they were when I did them in the past. 
So make sure you have a surgeon who's doing more than one or two of these a year. Make sure they're doing multiple procedures. So after you have all of the paperwork where your doctor has looked at the surgical report, the pathology report, which shows how much tube was sent to the pathologist or whether the fimbriae were cut off and looked at your ovarian reserve, it's time now to make a decision. And so your doctor is going to talk to you about, do you do the tubal reversal or do you do something like IVF? Now with the tubal reversal, what we find is statistically, the chances of it working, if you're under 35, is about 70 to 80%. The chances of a tubal reversal working over 40 is 30 to 40 percent. Now this is similar to IVF. IVF under 35 has about a 60 to 70 percent chance per transfer for two embryos. IVF for greater than 40 with two embryos is closer to 30 40 percent. So the difference is more one is per try where the other one is over years of trying. The tough thing about a tubal reversal is it's usually not covered by insurance because they don't want to pay for you to try to get pregnant again. And you chose to do this in the past. And so unfortunately, some young women who were pushed into this in the past now have to undergo this and they have to pay for this out of pocket. And it can range anywhere from about $5,000 to $21,000 to do a tubal reversal. The average cost is close to about $8,685. But again, that can range. IVF can range from anywhere as little as $5,000 to as much as $15,000. So when you take this into consideration, IVF and the tubal reversal are similar in price. Therefore, I usually tell patients, if you're really only wanting one kid, it really does make sense to just undergo IVF. Here, you get to be able to get pregnant. Your chances are about the same. But most important, you get to keep your form of contraception. Now, if you're wanting more than two kids, there might be a benefit of doing the tubal reversal if you're a good candidate. So, for example, if you were 40 years of age and you said, I want to have two kids, well, then actually IVF would make more sense because you're really not going to get two kids after a tubal reversal after 40. You may even have a hard time with IVF. In summary, when your tubes are blocked, you need a doctor to evaluate how they were blocked by the procedure that was done, which is usually done by looking at a surgical report as well as a pathology report. Additionally, you want to be tested for your ovarian reserve to find out if you're even a good candidate for IVF and check his sperm to make sure he has good sperm to be able to get pregnant naturally. As we discussed, the ectopic risk is going to be higher because you're reattaching the tubes, and that goes as high as 3 to 8%. So in the end, if you're more mature, have poor egg quality, have bad sperm, or don't have good chances with a tubal reversal, you're better off going to IVF. If you're young and you had the right surgery and the sperm is good and your egg reserve is okay, then doing the tubal reversal makes sense. Just make sure you get a good surgeon. I feel like guys don't get much love on this show. And so today is man day. You get to have your time because we're going to talk about vasectomies. When it comes to vasectomies, I think this is more misunderstood than actually tubal reversals. I think most people understand that you can either reverse the tube or do IVF. I don't have many patients come in thinking you can do much more, but when it comes to a vasectomy, that's not the same. I have patients come in thinking you can do other treatments, when in reality, there is really only two options. You can either undergo a vasectomy reversal, or you can undergo IVF. Now, this may be shocking to some people because some people think, well, why can't you just extract the sperm from the testicle and then inject that in like an artificial insemination? And the reason is because when we extract the sperm from the epididymis, we do not get enough sperm to be able to perform an artificial insemination. You need close to 20 million sperm 
to be able to do an artificial insemination after washing it. But when you do an aspiration, you might get a million, five million at the most, but not enough to be able to do an artificial insemination cycle. And so for that reason, if we're going to extract the sperm, there is really only one option, and that will be IVF with ICSI, ICSI, to inject the sperm into the egg. Now, like the tubal reversal, there are pros and cons. The pros of doing a vasectomy reversal is that, again, it's free to try to have a kid. The cons of having a, t- a vasectomy reversal is that it may not work, so then you're spending more money now to do something else. Additionally, you have to have a form of contraception after you're done. So do you get another vasectomy after reversing your vasectomy when you're done having kids? And just like tubal reversals, there are things we look at to know if a vasectomy can be reversed. Looking at things like the age of the man. Looking at how the procedure was done or how long ago it was done before. How many kids are they wanting? Now, I'm not a urologist. And so this is going to be evaluated by a urologist. And they'll be able to tell you that. How long you've had since your vasectomy has become quite controversial. There has been some doctors that said that even after 15 years, you can reverse a vasectomy and have success. I've actually never met a patient yet with that, but that's what I have read. And as I said, it's somewhat controversial. When it comes to age, as men get older, their sperm gets worse and worse. And so if you are, let's say, 55 or 60, there is a high chance that your sperm may be so fragmented that even with a reversal, You may not get pregnant, and it may benefit you to do something like IVF. And similar to what we talked about with a tubal reversal, how many kids you want makes a difference. If you know you want a lot of kids, well, then it might make more sense to do a a vasectomy reversal because then you can just have as many kids as you want without having to pay for it each time. Similar to the tubal reversal, I would also recommend having your partner tested. Can you imagine if you underwent a vasectomy reversal and then found out your partner's tubes were blocked? You just underwent a procedure now and still need to do IVF. So it's always important to evaluate your partner to make sure they're a good candidate to be able to do that. Now, when it comes to the procedure, there are essentially two types of procedure. The first procedure is where they they take the vas deferens and they attach it to the vas deferens. The second procedure is where they take the vas deferens and they attach it to the epididymis. Now, when it comes to any type of reversal, the question is, how common does it work? And kind of like the tubal reversal, it's around a 30 to 90% success. So that's a pretty wide range. And so some of those factors we talked about may affect the chances of success. So in summary, for a vasectomy, there are essentially two options. Option one, undergoing a vasectomy reversal, or option two, proceeding with IVF. Just like with a tubal reversal, you want to make sure that your partner's tubes are open and that they have good ovarian reserve before you undergo this procedure. Also, like a tubal reversal, this is not usually covered by insurance. So again, you're determining your cost of doing one procedure. If it doesn't work, do you then go to IVF or do you go straight to IVF? I think the most important thing to understand is that you can't undergo an IUI with extracting sperm from the epididymis. The only option would be is to do IVF with a procedure called a PESA, which is how you extract the sperm from the epididymis and then do an ICSI where we inject the sperm into the egg. The only other option then would be to undergo a vasectomy reversal. I know this is a very specific topic tonight and may not address most of my patients, but I think it's really good for everyone to know. Maybe you may have a friend who has this and now you know more about this and you can let them know. The good news is there's options. And so even if you have your tubes blocked, even if you've had the vasectomy, You can still have kids, and you have several options. I hope everyone is doing great. We always appreciate the reviews and comments that we get. 
I look forward to talking to you again next week on Taco Bout Fertility Tuesday. 